Earlier this year, the internet had a really good time for a few weeks with memes from AI-generated images. It was the perfect memeium, since you can almost instantly see your most wild ideas come to life in images that would normally have taken hours of follow through, and the unique humor of them also not really looking convincingly humanly made added to their absurdity as well. I personally found joy in creating these images, but my tune has since changed and I'm not really laughing anymore. I have become increasingly concerned about the implications of AI art since I started waking up to the fact that it's not some meme generating innocuous tech created by Joe Dabuchi in Idaho. It is a Silicon Valley hyper-capitalist nightmare that spawns from stealing from the work of artists for the benefit of mega corporations. That's right, bitch. It's NFTs all fucking over again. Get your typing fingers ready for some more nasty comments. Or better yet, why not just get your bot to generate some transphobic remarks because you probably don't want to do it yourself anyway. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm an artist, educator, video person, and I'm the first trans person. And you're watching Artists Beware, the series where I talk about all of the shady things affecting artists. Today, of course, we are delving into the rapidly evolving sphere of AI art and why I'm concerned about its potential impact on artists in certain creative industries. And I'm also going to take a look at and analyze the driving forces behind it. Before we get into this, let me just say thank you to my patrons over on Patreon you make these videos possible. If you'd like to support the channel, you can go over to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash catgrapham, where I post exclusive videos every month. And if you like my art, which is 100% human made, you can also support me by going over to my shop and getting some books or prints or a copy of my Game Boy game that I came out with. But now let's start off by first explaining what AI art is. Part one, what is AI art? AI art is the practice of using generative programs that have been fed a set of images to become trained into being able to create new unique images using elements from that original image set. Typically, the accessible AI image generators create new images by the user giving the program a prompt of keywords. For example, if I typed into crayon, previously called Dali Mini, painting of a cat in the style of Van Gogh, it would use keywords like painting, cat, style, and Van Gogh, and it would dig through its data sets to find images corresponding to those keywords and combine them together to create exactly what was described. Although it's not always necessarily convincing. The idea of using algorithms to combine human-made elements to create endlessly unique results is not a new idea in creative industries. Generative art as a medium has existed since the 1970s with programs like Aaron laying the foundations for AI image creation nowadays. What is relatively new though, is an extensive variety of the technology being widely and easily accessible to the public. And more importantly, in my opinion, it's rapid climb out of the uncanny valley and into edging closer and closer into looking indistinguishable from human-made images. It's gotten really good really fast. The fact that the results have improved rapidly hasn't gone unnoticed. It has generated a lot of concern from the media, especially from artists who are worried about the possible ramifications of this technology becoming indistinguishable from art, as well as the murky implications of copyright and the abuse of this technology to rip off artists and put them out of jobs. Part two, follow the money. I personally like to get a read on any new technology that tries to present itself as seemingly like neutral or positive. And in this case, I asked myself, who is making these AI models and where are they getting the money to do it? Because it definitely costs a lot of money. When I began to look into where the money is coming from for AI image generation, I was a little bit surprised at just how much money has been poured into it in the last several years. I think there's maybe like this myth that these things just sort of come about out of nowhere or are spawned by like a couple of dudes in a basement with good intentions. But the reality is, is that there's 
billions of dollars of capital backing this technology. Let's look at OpenAI LP, the company behind the DALI generators. OpenAI is a for-profit company that is owned by the nonprofit parent company, OpenAI Inc. Two of its co-founders include Sam Altman, the former president of Y Combinator, a startup accelerator that loans capitals to new startups and which helped launch things like Airbnb, DoorDash, Instacart, Stripe, Reddit, Twitch, any other company that has contributed to the hypercapitalist gig economy that we now all suffer in. And another co-founder of OpenAI, who you may or may not be familiar with, is Elon Musk. Other additional funders and executives include the founder of PayPal, the founder of LinkedIn, former CTO of Stripe. They funded the company with an initial combined $1 billion. And this is important, have since received an additional billion dollars in funding from Microsoft, which by the way, Microsoft just laid off a thousand people today. So that's nice. DALI is only their latest technology with other systems they created as part of their overall goal to create quote unquote, friendly AI to benefit humanity, something that has worked out really well in every sci-fi movie ever. They include a writing model called GPT, which was created by learning from scraping all of the text from links shared on Reddit posts with more than three upvotes. It is able to generate long form text with such human-like competency that the third and latest GPT model was not released to the public for fears of abuse. It's a good thing that this model was then exclusively licensed to Microsoft. They also created another system much like GPT for writing code called Codex. And that was trained using the original code from millions of repositories uploaded to Microsoft's GitHub platform. A thing I guess they can just use uh, for whatever they want. So sorry if you ever wrote code and uploaded it to GitHub. As for other major players in AI art technology, you have the predominantly used Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to name just two. Midjourney is a relatively new startup company that has a text image AI model that primarily works through their Discord or their webpage. It was funded by David Holtz, who created the company called Leap Motion in 2010, a company that invented a type of like motion controlled peripheral that wasn't terribly successful, but was eventually bought out by another company for like $30 million. Midjourney doesn't have like a terribly nefarious background other than I guess being started by a multi-millionaire Silicon Valley tech bro and has yet to be sold to a mega corporation like OpenAI, but they currently have a premium service where you can pay for creating higher resolution images and it goes faster. The AI was trained by quote unquote, scraping the internet for billions of images, including the work of thousands of different artists on websites like DeviantArt and Pinterest. There's actually a tool to see if your artwork is included in the data set used to train it. If I search my own name, I can see that several of my paintings were used as part of the training for it and are logged. Stable Diffusion is one of the other main players in the sphere of burgeoning technology. Stable Diffusion was created by Stability AI in 2022. Stability AI was co-founded by Imad Mustaki, a former hedge fund manager. The company was initially funded by Lightspeed Investments, which helped fund the beginning of Snapchat and has just recently invested $7.1 billion in unnamed crypto projects. It also additionally just pledged $101 million of funding to Stability AI, with an evaluation of the company being at $1 billion in total. The angle Stable Diffusion takes is that it's open source and not centrally owned by the company, which I guess is good by comparison. The software actually runs on the user's computer rather than a cloud service like Dolly or Midjourney, making it more adaptable and also making it easier to wildly misuse it since there's no direct control over what it can generate like Midjourney or Dali have. With that, I'd like to now move into the next part where I go into detail of all of the problems I have with this technology and how it can and is already starting to affect artists. Part three, the major problems. While on the topic of stable diffusion, Imad has raised eyebrows from artists about his ethics. A former hedge fund manager might have 
bad ethics? I'm shocked. Ahmad is a supporter of NFTs and consistently attempts to discredit and brush off the concerns of artists when they have concerns about this technology through interviews and tweets. Ironically, some of the most concerning implications for abuse is coming from stable diffusion because of the ease in which you can specifically train unique sets of data for creating images in like the style of living or dead artists. For example, 93,000 images have already been made using stable diffusion to mimic the work of Greg Rutowski, with him saying that people are basically pretending to be him and passing off the work they made as his. There are thousands of these instances happening on the internet right now. And if you look at the perspective of the people creating these images, they really think they are like actual artists. This person honestly really just combined two images, one of a Taylor Swift album cover and the other a digital illustration to create what they thought of as like this brand new idea. And honestly, it looks like shit, bruv. Sorry, I shouldn't be mean. It's a very serious and taxing process. He spent a lot of time on this, you guys. That's really valid. Using the platform that he used, you can essentially just like rip off artists from ArtStation with ease and with no fear of copyright violation. There's also recently the story of somebody entering AI made art into a contest at the Colorado State Fair and winning first place, beating other actual artists who actually made things, which is very cool. Some of the more disgusting misuses have come in the form of somebody making a model to create art in the style of the recently deceased Kim Jong-ji within 48 hours after their death, and then having the absolute gall to ask people to credit them when using it, which is uh, as rancid as it is ironic. Imad claims that this basically is not his fault in any way, and the fault of this abuse lies in the person that decided to train the A art specifically that way. Which like, fine I guess, yeah, you didn't make it with the sole intent of creating a tool for grifters to rip off artists, but also you absolutely knew that this was going to happen, and you are the one profiting with investments in the hundreds of millions of dollars, my dude. And the incredible work of somebody who has dedicated their life to this craft can be ripped and passed off by some jerkwad in no time flat, and you made that possible. That wouldn't exist without you. There's also similarly grim capabilities on Midjourney as well, since it scraped the work of so many artists to train the AI and has intricately filed all of it in their databases. Anyone can essentially create new artwork in the style of somebody else by just asking it to do that. And there's no way for artists to opt out of being a part of the data sets or for people to search it. And there seems to be really no intention of uh, putting that in place. There is now entire graphic novels using AI generated artwork, with one in particular making the news recently for filing copyright for the images included in the graphic novel. The irony of wanting to use art created by living artists to train your AI and then turning around and wanting to file copyright for creating new images based on the images you skirted around copyright to use is, ooh, it's a spicy meatball. Artists are really concerned about the future of their jobs, with many who work commercially believing that this technology will be used to replace them and limit the number of companies that will actually hire artists at a fair rate and instead will just use AI to create a discounted knockoff version of the same thing that they already do. You have People like the founder of Midjourney, David Holtz, trying to convince the public that this technology is actually good for artists and for art as a whole, because of course somebody making this technology and profiting from it would do that. He downplays the concerns of its implications in a recent Forbes interview. When asked about how this would affect commercial artists, he said, quote, I think there's two kinds of ways this could go. One way is to try to provide the same level of content that people consume at a lower price, right? And the other way to go about it is to build wildly better content at the prices that we are already willing to spend. I find that most people, 
they are already spending the money and you have the choice between wildly better content and cheaper content, actually choose wildly better content. The market has already established a price that people are willing to pay. I think this is absolute bullshit. <laughs> Artists are chronically underpaid, underappreciated, and overworked, and are treated so poorly in so many industries that if the companies hiring artists can slash part of their budget by partially creating or fully creating images using AI at a wildly cheaper cost, they will absolutely do so. They're already starting to do so. Companies are beginning to use AI text to image models like Midjourney to at least begin the concepting process of creating images for advertising, editorial work, or concept art. And David Holtz says this himself as a positive. It's obviously not going to wipe out the need for artists entirely, and I don't think anybody believes that, but it will absolutely have an impact and make it even harder to succeed and thrive as a working artist. Part 4. What is the end goal? The final forms and utilizations of this technology isn't going to be fully realized in standalone text-to-word generators on web pages. This technology is being sold to mega corporations, at least in part to edge out competing software and also eliminate creative jobs by doing so to appeal to businesses. Microsoft has already announced that they will do this with OpenAI technology as a feature in their new image editing software to make their app ecosystems more appealing and to attempt to edge out competitors like Canva. Adobe will probably use the same technology in things like Photoshop and Lightroom because of their close partnership with Microsoft. Google is also rapidly developing AI image generation technology, and I bet they will also attempt to create software to compete with Microsoft and Canva and all the rest of them. And this is just a guess, but I bet Google is probably training its systems on photos being uploaded to their Google Photo Cloud services and what's uploaded here on YouTube. Facebook also has its new AI image generation called text to scene I can tell you that this isn't to just make some memes on Twitter, which, by the way, probably improved the technology. These are some of the largest companies in the world, and they want to be the first ones to have the best AI image generation to edge out the competitors for your money, for other businesses' money. And this will leave us with fewer and fewer choices, and we will have to continue to pay the insane amounts they charge for their software just to continue doing our jobs that they're trying to get rid of. And artists have unknowingly laid the foundation for this to happen without our consent. And that should make you mad, because really they're the ones that are going to be monetarily benefiting from it all. I kind of see this in the same light as the robots created by Boston Dynamics. 10 years ago, it was like a fun meme and we all had a good laugh at how funny the nightmarish looking dogs were being pushed over and shit. And then, oops, it was leased to the NYPD so that robots could literally start to spy and, and kill people as part of like a mass surveillance police state agenda. I don't know what the far reaching applications and implications of AI art will be, but I know that it will not be funny memes and innocent creative fulfillment for jerk-offs. Conclusion. Art as product. Some of the arguments proponents of AI art have put forward are a little compelling, and I understand the allure of their thinking that anybody anywhere could create incredible art that looks just like their favorite artists with just having an idea. It's a cute, lovely little fantasy. And yeah, the idea of being able to make anything you want come to life appeals to my dumb monkey brain. But when billionaires, ex-hedge fund managers, people who grifted NFTs less than a year ago are saying it, I immediately get suspicious of the world they want to have part in molding. The unfortunate reality is it is not your innate right as a human to be able to make the same thing as some of the most incredible artists who have spent their entire lives dedicated to improving their craft by sticking it in a fucking blender and calling it your own just because you wanna. Just like I can't turn around tomorrow and say I want to run a marathon, decide I'm too lazy to do the hard work of training, and expect that I should be able to hop in a car and drive my way through the race, running past and over, 
hundreds of people who have trained for it and then demand an award for finishing first and thinking it's the same thing. We can't create anything we want instantly because we want it, especially when it means exploiting the work of others who have already been viciously undervalued. And if you think that you're exempt from that, then I don't know if we live on the same planet. I found that there's such a heavy overlap of AI art supporters and NFT hawkers. And I think it's partially because they share some of a core philosophy surrounding art. They see art as a product or as a means to sell a product and they don't care about anything deeper. It's all surface level and that there's little value in learning to make it yourself or at least hiring somebody to make it. Also that art is seemingly some impossible thing to learn and it's a magical gift bestowed upon a lucky few, which it isn't. I didn't know how to paint until I was 20. To me, art making as a practice is a very sacred thing. I spent the last decade of my life dedicated to it, putting my entire self into the work I have made almost every single day. I learned who I was through making art and like not even some flowery abstract way, like I actually figured out that I was trans through making paintings. I healed from trauma while making art and worked through really difficult emotions. No stupid ass algorithmic AI generative bullshit will ever be able to do that. Sorry about it. AI art is soulless. It will always be soulless. And more importantly, it will always be derivative. I don't think the megacorps who have invested billions into making this happen will ever see that, but I hope you do. All right, fine, time to get off my soapbox. My feet are pruny. So I hope you like this video. I hope maybe it was informative, persuasive. I'm really not looking forward to the way that this technology continues to evolve because um, I think it's going to be bad and it's only going to get worse. But I guess remember to support actual fucking artists that are actually fucking making shit. And I want to thank my patrons over on Patreon again for literally providing me the ability to do this. And if you're a patron, you even get your name in the credits of each video. They're probably going by my face right now. Whoa. Look how cool those people are. Until next time, remember, do an art.